All right, so I've been listening to bad rape jokes on the radio for a couple hours. There's a woman named Christy. If you guys know my Facebook, I'd like you to go on there to that GoFundMe, and I'd like you to share the shit out of it. <clears throat> As some of you know, Teresa Macelia was raped in Boulder. And she fought off her attacker. Her attacker was never charged with a crime. But she was charged with assault for defending herself. Um, this lady now, she is charged with filing a false report. The police said that she did not sufficiently attempt to fight off her attacker despite the fact that she said no repeatedly. She is a mother of two and is trying to get a PhD. Please do something. Um, we can't just allow this stuff to continue. We can't just turn a blind eye because it's not happening to us because it is going to happen to us or our children. It'll happen to your uncles, your aunts, your cousins, sisters, brothers. As long as we do nothing about it, as long as we put all this red tape between the victims and justice, as long as the police are working to help the predators, we have a major issue. The police need to look at both sides. Both sides. There are factors that make you more likely to be victimized. When it comes to physical abuse, those factors are your size or stature, your social standing, whether or not you own the roof over your head or even have one. Whether or not you're around people who are alcoholics. Whether or not you're trapped in your current environment for fear. And I could go on for days about the things that you could fear in leaving your attackers. Children in foster care are the most likely to be physically abused. But then we need to move on to systemic abuse. That's the red tape. The things that make you most likely to be abused by law enforcement and the court system are age, gender, now, this one you might be confused by. When it comes to gender, being a male affords you far less rights in the public eye. You are far less likely to be seen as a victim because you are a male. Your guilt is more likely to be assumed because you are a male. People are less likely to look into it and less likely to have sympathy for you because you are a male. Then, of course, there's housing. Everybody knows that if you take it out on a homeless person, you'll get away with it. Hands down, you're just going to get away with it. You can assault a homeless person and get away with it. Just call them mentally ill. Chances are pretty good that... Nobody's going to have their back because they're homeless. If somebody had their back, they wouldn't be homeless. Meanwhile, many of these homeless people suffer from PTSD. That's post-traumatic stress disorder. Why do they suffer from this so much? Due to homelessness. Due to growing up in the system. 
being victimized in the system. 80 to 85 percent of child pornography comes from the system, the foster care system. When you are released as an adult, you do what's called aging out. You're 18, you're out the door. No help whatsoever. No assistance, nothing. In order to get that assistance, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops. A lot of hoops that cost money that you just don't have because you got dropped off with nothing. They don't give you money when you turn 18 to be able to start off with. No, you're dropped off with nothing. You're homeless now at 18 years of age after enduring all that abuse and nobody would listen to you. Other homeless people have gone through the same thing and police victimize the homeless the most. You have to be afraid to go to sleep. You have to be afraid to use a blank. You have to be afraid to go into an establishment. You have to be afraid to use the bathroom. You have to be afraid that at any point in time, some police officer could take out the fact that he didn't get a blowjob this morning on you. Police officers are very, very likely to be rapists very highly likely to be rapists because of their position. A lot of predators choose to become police officers for two reasons. Number one, ease of access. It's easier to access victims if you have a position of authority. <clears throat> Number two, who's going to believe the person that you victimized? You have your pick. You can go to 30 different service calls and pick your favorite female out of all those service calls. Oh, she's young. She's small. She's pretty. She's got a mentally ill tag on her head. She's got cut marks on her arms. Nobody's going to believe her. So that must make it okay. Or in the case of several officers from Adams County, the county that Natalie Bollinger was killed in, in that case, or in those cases, one of them in specific, a man was, an officer was giving a woman home, a ride home from the hospital. A woman who is considered mentally ill, they said. So that makes it okay. Meanwhile, how did he get busted? He was fucking around the hood of his patrol car. For every cop dumb enough to do that in front of his own cameras, there are at least 10 officers who aren't that stupid. There are at least 10 officers who know where the body cameras are, where the vehicle cameras are, and know how to turn it off. Many victims are too scared to turn in a police officer. And the ones who do try to turn in a police officer are treated horribly, and their report is never taken, in most cases. While I was tortured by police officers repeatedly for trying to turn in child molesters and rapists, it was pretty obvious to me that they don't care if that officer is guilty or not. That officer is a fellow officer and therefore he is more of a human being than his victim. Please help. We need to put a stop to this. Police don't adequately investigate crimes against males. Then again, they don't really adequately, they don't adequately go after their own officers. They won't adequately investigate their own officers. They won't adequately investigate rapes against females. What makes you think they give two shits about you? It doesn't matter if you're male or female. 
Without those body cameras, police don't have to do their jobs. They won't be forced to do their jobs. And if you don't have any money, that makes you the easiest to victimize on both sides. The less money you have, the less likely it is you're going to have the money for a lawyer. The less likely it is you're going to have the money to go somewhere safe. And if you're homeless, <clears throat> it's less likely that anybody's going to miss you or anyone's going to know you're gone or that anyone's going to actually go in and make a missing persons report when you disappear. If somebody drove up to the house that I'm in right now and the gentleman who was here was not here, that person could drag me out of this house drive me out, drop me off in a field with a hole in my head, and nobody would even start looking for me until somebody accidentally happened upon my body. I do mean that. Because of the slander that I've had to endure and the abuse over that slander, and because of the fact that the police outright refused to do their jobs at every step of the way. That fucked me severely. Now, I have police officers from a department that did a lot of major screwing up that are telling me that they'll take my report, and I'd like to. But I need someone to go in there with me for my safety so that I don't get shipped off to a nut hatch again so that my words are heard and the evidence is seen. There are people who are mad at me for exposing the situation with me trying to turn in the police in Colorado and the things that they did. Mandy Hughes is pissed off at me because I recorded our conversations. But our conversations show that I was trying to get a help. Same thing with Miss Peaches. I was trying to get help. Same thing with Aaron Cockerham and Shannon Alvarado. I was trying to get help. Some of these people, they couldn't help because they had warrants. Some of them couldn't help because they didn't have the money or the time. Some of these people didn't help because the police wouldn't listen to them. But the fact is, they're not the ones going through all of this abuse. Now, some of them went through a bit of abuse over it, and that is very sad to me that they had to go through that. They shouldn't have had to. Police should have done their jobs. Now, this young woman who was recently raped in Boulder, she deserves justice. She deserves justice. And she deserves a chance to defend herself, an honest chance to defend herself. She's in college that's a couple extra points. She's a female. That's a couple extra points. There's a lot of factors that are involved that give her more of a chance than I ever will. Now, I assume because she's in college that she has a roof over her head. That's just a little bit more help. She shouldn't have to go through this. Please help.